Hi, this is Debbie with another video tutorial, um, more about designing in studio. I have Photoshop and I love it and I use it a lot, but a lot of people don't have uh, drawing programs on their computers and I just want to let you know that there is a whole lot you can do in studio. Lately, most of my designs I do completely in studio and the key to this is learning how to use the design tools and, and um, your replicate tools. Well, basically pretty much all the tools but the um, design tools, like your drawing tools, your freehand, your, um, where you can draw by holding down on your mouse key and make sure you hold it down the entire time. And of course your uh, curve shape tool and your polygon tool, your elliptical, and all of these different shapes that can create something really cool. And I like to create a lot of print and cuts in studio, so I use these a lot. Okay, so we're going to get started. We're just going to draw a basic shape of an oval. Now to change this oval to look something more like a teardrop, I'm going to double click on it. And that puts me in point editing mode. Now I'm going to zoom in here so I can show you what I do to make it look more like a petal on a leaf or it can be a teardrop or just about anything you want. First of all, I'm going to elongate a little bit more by dragging this point and see the points that I'm editing you see are white. Now I want to make this a little bit more sharp on the point. So all I do is go up here to corner and I move these little handlebars I move one this way and trying to keep it balanced. I move the other one this way. And there you go. I've created a totally different shape from that oval. Now, another thing a lot of people don't seem to use a lot. I'm going to go ahead and fill this with some color. We'll fill it with um, a pretty little blue. We'll even make that line color blue so we can see. And I'm even going to rotate it just to show you that it can be a flower petal or it can be a teardrop. So we'll hit rotate 180 degrees. It's a simple shape, but it can come in handy for a lot of different things when you weld it together from borders to doilies to all sorts of things. So learning to make little basic shapes and how to change the, sh the original shape that you make is really key to designing in studio. Okay, now this is our freehand tool. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to hold down on my mouse and I'm using a laptop to do this in and I'm just going to kind of make a little shape like this. Okay, now we know that that's just a line and if we go to uh, cut this, it's just going to cut a little line into our paper. So what I want to do to make this maybe look like a stem to a flower is I'm just going to go up here to the offset tool, select offset, and we can also make it corner if you want those edges to be cornered. And I'm just going to bring that in as close to my shape that I drew and I'm going to drag it over here, the shape, the line that I drew and I don't need this any longer so I'm going to go ahead and delete it. I'm going to fill this with a color. We'll make this line color green and we'll go and fill it with a green so it can give us an idea. And now that takes us back to this shape here. Okay, I'm going to go ahead and control click to duplicate this. and I'm going to manipulate it a little more. I'm going to bring this down. I'm going to zoom in here so you can see what I'm doing. So I dragged it down and now I'm going to corner this end. And we're going to fill that with the same green and we're going to also make that line color green. 
I'm going to go back to fit to window. And I'm just going to rotate this, move it over here. And I may not have made these the same color, so I'm just going to and make sure they're both the same fill color. And we'll make sure they're both the same line color. Oops, clicked on the wrong thing. It looks like it is. It just looks a different tone to me here. Okay, and then that replicate tool always comes in handy because I'm going to mirror this left. Maybe we'll put another leaf right down here. Okay, now I'm going to rotate this back to 180 degrees again because we're going to make us a little flower. So I'm going to hold down my shift key to make a perfect circle while I'm dragging this around. Maybe bring that up a little more. And I always like to make a copy of that and just put it to the side. Okay, I'm just going to eyeball this to make sure that it's centered. But you can always put your the my other videos where I showed you how to um, align everything perfectly. You can do that. Okay, so now I have this selected. And I drag down that little piece there to the center of the circle. And I'm going to go back to my Replicate tool. And I'm going to go to Advanced Options and just maybe set it at... This is always kind of trial and error here. So I'm going to set it at 30 and maybe make, I don't know, we'll try six of them and I'm going to hit the replicate. Okay, so I don't want to do that. I want them further apart. So I'm going to make it 45 degrees. I'm going to hit replicate. Okay, that's pretty good, but what I'm going to take this one and just go down to one and hit replicate. There we go. I've got a nice little flower going on here. And now I want to drag this out. I'm going to hold down my shift key. Oops, I'm dragging the wrong thing. Let's hit undo. Love that undo button. Make sure I grab that circle. And I still don't have that circle, so there we do. Okay, I'm just going to drag, by dragging the corners, that's how I resize things, and it's, and it's pretty easy. And then I'm going to bring this down to the middle. Kind of line it up just by eyeballing it. I'm going to control click again, put, whoop, I keep on grabbing the wrong thing. Okay, control click and make a copy of that. Now that these are all done, I'm going to just weld these together. And there's a pretty flower shape. Now I'm going to take that circle that I duplicated and I'm going to fill it with a nice yellow and I'm going to make the line color a yellow. I'm going to add it right there to the center of my flower and then I'm going to group these together. Now say we want to do a print and cut of these. So you say, oh wow, if I do, if I if I cut this, I'm gonna have all of these different shapes cutting out. Because we're gonna take a look at the cut lines real quick. Okay, right now, if we cut this just as it is, you'll see this shape is gonna go up here and cut through our flower, and this shape's gonna cut through our stem. So in order to prevent this to do a print and cut, we're gonna select everything, and I'm gonna go ahead and group it. And then I'm going to select Cut Edge. So now when I go to do a print and cut, it's going to cut it just like the way we see it. So I'm going to go back to Fit to Window. And there we go. 
Okay, just for just now, I'm going to ungroup this because I want to show you some other little things. And I'm going to ungroup this again. If I wanted this to be a little bit more, look a little bit more dimensional, and a lot of people forget about this tool, but we're going to go to the gradient fill window. And I want this to be sort of this golden color here. But if I select something like this, and I go to no line color, and we're going to go back to that gradient fill, go to advanced options, and add another little color. Darken that up a little bit. Maybe move this up. Getting kind of little wiggles here. And since I would want the light at the top, I guess I can just go ahead and rotate this like this. Group this back together. Move that over there. Here I'm going to ungroup it again. I think I'm going to go ahead and change, put it a line color back on it so it can define some of those little edges. So I'll put that line color. And I'm going to group this all back together. And we're going to go back here and check our cut lines again to make sure. And see, when we're going to zoom in here because when you do this, you want to make sure you move everything just in the right place. Because see, if I cut this, I get this little edge cutting here and I don't want that. And now obviously that didn't group, but so now I have it grouped and I can move it there. That'll be a much cleaner cut and I won't have that little space cut out. So I'm going to go back to fit to window here, fit to window and my regular view. So you all can take a look at how easy that was to design a little flower. I used the freehand tool and remember you can do lots of shapes with the freehand tool. Always make sure you hold down on that. And as soon as I, if I would let go right now, it would stop and my image would stop right here. But that freehand tool is really great. It comes in handy to make a lot of different shapes. Okay, and this here, when we want to draw a curved shape, that's exactly what it does. If you're following the lines of something, let's see, and you go a little bit slower with this. And it's fine if you make a mistake because you can always go back and edit these little nodes. But the less editing you have to do, the more you'll like it. Because I'm doing this shape because today, I made an ice cream cone card and I had to draw shapes similar to this one. See how I did that there? I'm going to have to go back and edit that because I really think I would like it to be a different shape. But I just want to show you, since none of my ice creams are ever even on my ice cream cone, I made a shape like that. And you can see here when I click on this, it said it's a curve. So if I click on this one, it's also a curve. And this is where these little handlebars come in. So we can kind of like make them a little bit more curvy. And just like here, I want it more curved right here. So I just drag that little handlebar up. 
And that's just a quick little thing or whatever that I made an ice cream cone shape with, but it does show you how you can manipulate these tools to make it the color that you want it. So I'm going to go ahead and fill this with this brown. And of course, I'm going to make my light, my line color a brown. And then we're going to grab a, this shape right here, our little, oops, it still shows my fill color is there. We don't want that. We're just going to fill it with this kind of beigey color. Oops, line color, fill color. And I double click on this, and this is going to make my new shape for my cone. I'm going to bring this to front. Maybe shorten this a little bit just by dragging it upwards. And then the really cool thing that I did, in using all of your tools, you can do all sorts of things. Okay, I went in here. We're going to make it a fill color, none. And I went over here to my sketch tool and I did a diamond hatch. And then I went to my advanced options. And right here is my spacing and I just increased it, increased it, increased it. There we go. Then I went over here to my lines and I increased that. And then my line color. Say we'll make that a little darker. And you can place it on top of this here, or we can control click. And I hope this does right because earlier I had a little, a few problems. I've got that. I'm going to send this to the back. And dragging my cursor around both of these, I've select both shapes. I'm going to go to my modify tool. And I'm going to hit subtract. And now these are all little separate pieces, so I want to make sure I group them together. I'm going to bring it to the front. Okay, well, it looks like I'm going to have to change that color back again. So let's go to color, and we're going to make it that darker color again. Let's reverse that. Let's fill this with this color here. And now we're going to fill it with that color and bring this to the front. And I'm going to click on this and bring this back to the front so it looks And there you go. It's not the best ice cream in the world, but it gives you an idea of what can be done. Okay, over here, I started on a cat. I have a cat, and his name is Quincy, like Dr. Quincy, and because um, he likes to take care of all the other animals in the house. This is an image that I grabbed from um, doing Google Images, and it's a ping file. I brought it in. I did an auto trace on it, and then I wanted to kind of make it my own. So, using that um, the freehand tool, I drew the lines around his legs so they appear, and I drew all these other little elements in here, and then edited them, and then I even made him a couple of different sets of eyes, because this is his happy cat eyes, and if I move this over here, and I, and this is his He's kind of curious, kind of mischievous little look. So I wanted to make him a couple of different set of eyes. And the way I did this is I simply went in and used my drawing tools. I went from this, auto tracing this and filling it with black, to this image right here just by using my drawing tools. Okay, we're going to hop back over here real quick because there's other things that come into play when you're designing too.
I'm gonna hold down the shift key and make this a little bigger. Now I'm going to draw. I'm gonna to have to change that over to the the default should not be that. Sometimes the new updates or whatever kind of take a little bit getting used to. So we're going to go and uh, fill this with, oh, it doesn't matter. We'll just fill it with an orange. And then I'm going to go to my offset tool, do an internal offset. And I'm going to slide this slider up so it insets it as much as I want. Okay. Now I'm going to grab my cursor and select both of these, then right click and select Make Compound Path. Right now they're two separate ovals. So if I make a compound path, look what happens. I have a ring. and selecting my ring holding down that shift key I think I'm going to make this a little larger and I'm going to go back over to fill and we'll fill this with um, oh it doesn't matter either oh, we're going to go to that gold that pretty gold fill that with a pretty gold and make the line color I like that and then I'm going to duplicate this control click because I if I don't want to lose a shape that I've made and now if I brought this to the front it would just look like that so I'm going to undo that I'm going to zoom in on this I'm going to go over to my knife tool and I'm going to select a curve because right here is where I want to cut this. And then we have to do the other side. And I just want to delete this out. I'm going to go back to fit to window. I'm going to bring this to the front. I'm going to make my shape a little smaller so it goes right to those edges and it still isn't perfectly the way I want it so I that's when all this little editing comes in because I want it to look like a planet with a ring around it and if I send this object all the way to the back so I'm just going to double click on this and I'm going to make sure this will line up with the edges of my planet here. And I'm going to bring this down because it looks a little wide to me. Okay, now we're going to go fit to window. And I have a planet. And then say I want to make another ring. Let's go to that offset. Actually we're not going to do an offset on this. We're just going to control click. I'm going to drag this around like this and this over here to make it bigger. Let's 
squish it down to make the lines a little thinner. We're going to fill it. We're going to make the line color. We'll make this one blue and fill it with a blue. And we're going to send this to the back. And then we're going to send this to the back. Which, if I wanted to make this look a little bit more like a planet, I would fiddle with this circle a lot. But it just I just want to be able to show you that say how to send things to the back, to bring your designs in, how to make different shapes, how to make them look more dimensional, um, using your drawing tools, like this one here. This one more gives you more of a straight line. Kind of tool. But when you cook them together like this and you click on that, there you go. It makes you a compound path, a solid shape. But the great thing about these tools is it can also just make you a line that you just want to go around something. Say a trim on a door. You're drawing a door and you want a pretty little trim. Just kind of follow the angles of that door. Line it up, and then again, you can just go to your offset corner it. I could have changed this as well to a smaller offset. We'll just do that just to show you. I'm going to offset at that again. I'm going to select corner again. Once again, bring that in as close as you can. And then right inside here, I'm going to draw another rectangle. And obviously, that's going to be my default till I change it. So I'm going to go in here and select a nice beige color. We'll make a little brown trim line color brown we can even make that one oops beige I'm gonna drag this out okay I'm gonna send that to the back because I want the trim to be up front. So learning to use these tools can make you all sorts of very um, nice cutting files. And remember all of these shapes that you create here you can use them to make cards and I'm going to show you that real quick. I showed you in one video but I'm just going to go over it again. And that's making sure that you use that cut edge. Okay, we're going to go ahead and delete these out so I can select all those, delete them, show you real quick. Okay, I'm going to group these together and then I'll make this a little bigger. I'm going to control click and then I'm going to select weld. But as you can see, this gave me this edge here. I would probably move these, this ungroup this and move these in. But this is just a quick show you. Okay, and we really don't need a fill color. We're going to make our line color red because that always tells me something's in a cut shape. And see how these here? I would need to adjust this so I didn't get those edges. But like I said, we're just going to. And I'm going to move this to the side. Go to my replicate window. I'm going to mirror this left. There we go. And then I'm just going to join these two together.
no fill color. <laughs> Hold down my shift key. Hold down my shift key. Weld them. Now I'm going to put my perforated line right down here in the center. Holding down my shift key to make a straight line. And we're going to make that line color blue because I always like my perforated lines to be blue to remind me that that's what they are. And now I'm going to select all of this, group it together. I'm going to move that ice cream cone that we just made back over the top to show you what it's going to look like when it's printed. And if you want both sides, we can make this control click. And we're going to just right click on that and flip horizontally. So now if you want to do a print and cut and have both sides looking like an ice cream, this will be the front, I mean the back of your card. This will be the front. And one other thing that we can do is we're going to control click. I'm going to do that weld again even though I haven't fixed this. This is just an example. Weld it. Make the fill color nothing. Line color red. I'm going to make an internal offset again. Internal offset. And I'm going to bring that in quite a bit. There we go. The larger one, I'm just going to delete this out. Because we always like to have a place to, to type in our little sentiments and everything else. And we can even go with one step further and let's cut off this tip so we don't have to line it up perfectly. So I'm just going to go back to my straight line. Holding down my shift key. Go straight across. Cut off that top. Delete that part out. And this is where you can type your little sentiments into your card. So you can always have that aside. And that would also be a print and cut. So anyway, I'm going to put this back on top. So there's our front and our back of our ice cream cone card. So you're learning the design tools a little bit more. And I hope to go and be able to go into these even further, more about your point editing, more about how to create certain designs, and how to use all of the different tools to make your own cards, to make your own pictures, all kinds of stuff that you can do in studio. I hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial and it wasn't too long. And if you ever have any suggestions of video tutorials that you would like for me to make, please email me. My email link is on my blog in the upper right hand corner. Thank you all for watching and have a great day. Bye now. Photoshop and I love it and I use it a lot. But a lot of